want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this week's virtual drusha and begin by thanking Dr. Linda Weinberg for dedicating this week's drusha in commemoration of the 35th yard site of her son Joshua Martin Weinberg, Zichron Livracha, Mordechai Yoshua, Ben Peretz Moshe, Velea Miriam. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, his Nesham will have an Aliyah and the family a Nechama. We have the incredible privilege this week to read Parsha Shemini. And amongst the many halachos, many laws that are brought down in this week's Parsha, the Torah conveys to us the laws of Kashros, the dietary laws. And these are laws with which we are very familiar, right? Every species has its own set of laws. So fish, you can only consume it if it has fins and scales. And birds, generally we avoid consuming predatory birds. And when it comes to animals, behemoths, the Torah says, this is in Parakut Aleph Pasakimul, chapter 11, verse 3, Kol mafres es parsa visho sa shesa prasos ma'ale geir ba behema oso tochelu. Two qualities. The animal must be mafres es parsa, must have split hooves, and the animal must be ma'ale geira. It must chew its cud. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe makes an amazing observation. The Rebbe explains, you know, when the Torah gives us a halacha, a law, every halacha also has a hashkafa that is embedded into it. Every, every legal detail also has a profound life lesson or life outlook that is embedded in the very mechanistic details. And so when the Torah conveys to us the simonim for a kosher animal, look what the Torah is doing. The Torah is telling us that if a cow, if an animal, possesses these qualities, has a split, has split hooves, and chews its cud, then it's fit for Jewish consumption, which tells us, says the Rebbe, that there is something special about these qualities, and perhaps they are qualities that are not only important to the cow and to the livestock, but they're qualities which are important to us as well. So let's analyze these qualities for a few moments. If we start with ma'alegeira, with chewing, chewing the cud. So explains the Rebbe so beautifully. What happens when an animal chews its cud? It's a very simple process. The animal eats the food, swallows it, and then regurgitates it, right? Some animals have multiple stomachs, and so the animal ingests, digests a little bit, regurgitates, and repeats the process over and over. And the Rebbe says something so beautiful. He says, you know, sometimes in life we make decisions and we choose a particular course. And then at some point in time, I begin to feel that, you know what? Maybe this approach, maybe this mahalich, maybe this road that I'm taking is not right. But then I say to myself, I'm so vested in it. I've been on this road for years. Maybe I've even been on this road for decades. Now I know deep down, I feel, that it's probably not the right path. Deep down, I feel that this is not the right construct for my life. Deep down, this relationship is not good. This behavior is not good. This approach is not good. But I'm vested. I've spent so much time on this particular path that either I can't, I won't, I'm not brave enough to rethink it. When an animal regurgitates its food, it takes that which has become part of its body that which has become part of itself, and it spits it back up, it revisits it. And says the Rebbe, this is such an incredibly crucial part of successful living. To have the courage to think and to rethink your decisions. Sometimes in life we make the right decision when we're young, and it's still the right decision when we're older. And sometimes we make a decision when we're young, however you classify young, and then again, a day later, five days later, or maybe 27 years later, I recognize that, you know what? Maybe it was never the right decision, or maybe it once was the right decision, but is now no longer the right decision. I have to have the courage to chew my cud. I have to have the courage to look at myself in a critical fashion, to look at my life decisions in a critical fashion, to look at my lifestyle in a critical fashion and to ask myself, is this the right way? Am I doing the right things? Am I going down the path of success? Because what worked in the past does not necessarily work in the present and does not necessarily set you up for success in the future. That says the Rebbe is what it means to be ma'alegeira. Chew your cud. Find the courage to think and to rethink your decisions, to think and to rethink your approaches, to think and to rethink your lifestyles, to think and to rethink everything in life, because that's what leads to healthy, successful, dynamic living. No one of us has all the answers, 
And when we're young, we look at the world in one way. We make decisions based on that youthful outlook and disposition. Sometimes we're right and sometimes we're wrong. If we're right, fantastic, keep going. But if we're wrong, I have to chew my cud. I have to revisit those decisions. I have to revisit those outlooks. I have to revisit those hashkafas. And if I, they're not right for me now, I have to find the courage to rethink them. That's ma'alei gero. That's chewing your cud. What about ma'fra says parsa? What about a split hoof? And here the Rebbe says something truly beautiful. The Rebbe says the hoof, you know, the foot, is what keeps us anchored to the ground. He says in life, you have to have your feet on the ground. But you have to have a part of yourself that lives in the clouds. In other words, sometimes people become so anchored in reality that they have no imagination. And sometimes people get so carried away by imagination that they've lost the grip on reality. Successful living requires this synthesis. I have to have my feet on the ground. You have to be embedded in reality. I have to make good life decisions, solid life decisions, sensible life decisions. But at the same time, I have to have an imagination. At the same time, I have to be able to see beyond what's right in front of me and to imagine some type of incredible, magnificent future. And even if everyone else tells me, impossible, can't be done, it is what it is, I have to have that little piece of me that's not tethered to the earth. Says the Rebbe, what happens when an animal has a split hoof? So I'll give you the visual, right? So the animal has two parts of its foot that are tethered to the ground. But there's that middle empty space. There's that middle space that's not attached to the ground. There's that middle space that is not tethered to the earth. Says the Rebbe, that's what the Rebbe Shalom is trying to teach us. I have to be split hoofed. I have to live in the real world. And I have to make responsible decisions. But you know, sometimes people become so responsible that they lose imagination. Sometimes people become so quote-unquote realistic that they can't imagine anything bigger or better than themselves. So what do I have to do? I have to be my freses parsa. My foot must be firmly embedded on the ground. But there must be a little piece of me, a little part of me with my head in the clouds with my head in the heavens, with my soul and my heart wondering about what else can I do? What else can I be? How else can I grow? How can I continue to fully self-actualize? And as such, explains the Rebbe so beautifully that the simanim, the signs of a kosher animal, are not simply the distinctive signs for an animal that is fit for Jewish consumption, but they become the very signs, the very attributes that are necessary for successful living. Number one, be a malegera, chew your cud. Find the courage to visit and to revisit the life decisions you've made. Find the courage to visit and to revisit the personality that you've concretized and solidified for yourself. And if it's still the right one, if it's still the right persona, if it's still the right decisions, fantastic, keep going. But if it turns out that maybe what was good last year or last decade may not be good now, Find the courage to chew your cud and to make the necessary changes. And we must be split hoofed. We must be realistic people, grounded in reality, making responsible decisions. But don't become so responsible that you forget your imagination. Don't become so tethered to the earth that you forget to dream about what you could accomplish, what you could do, how you can grow, and how you can evolve. Have a split hoof. Make sure you're firmly embedded. But leave a little bit for growth. Leave a little bit for dreaming. Leave a little bit for your head in the clouds. The simonim for the kosher animal are the simonim for our successful living. Are the simonim, the recipe for a successful life and a dynamic future. Wishing everyone a good and Erev Shabbos and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.